And here we are, and Zoom is not uh, going to explode on me just yet. Uh, we're here with another episode of Binary Jazz. As always, uh, I'm Chris, Jazz Sequence on the Internet. Uh, I'm here with uh, Allison and Gary, who are uh, Allison Plus and Binary Gary, respectively, on the Internet. And uh... Ooh, I think he's called this respectable. <laughs> and this is a thing we do, uh, you know, regularly. Uh have a podcast and talk about things and uh yeah that's all um i was don't have an opening if... bit <laughs> we never do um i was wondering if gary had any more questions oh because because um, we didn't, we didn't okay finish them no, and it's okay to say no we didn't finish them last week we were caught talking about uh for those of you just joining who didn't uh who didn't listen to the last episode we ended the call mid-conversation uh tor directed towards catholics <laughs> or what? or our knowledge of being catholics well, it was, yeah <laughs> it, was, it was about um i don't know spirit essence oh it was yeah wisdom as a spirit yeah 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 since then i've read some essays on um that were written like 2021 ish um early 22 like still like raging pandemic and um there were two common threads that i saw um the first was that there is a uh, this is an inflection point um and it has to be an inflection point for humanity and i as i sit here in is it may may end of may almost june of 2023 i'm like mm, i don't know that that's that part is held true when when, when was this back, when was it written i it, there were several that i read but 2021 2022 so more than a year into it but it seems to me that collectively we're all back to our normal bullshit um yes you dear listener included <laughs> i don't know if you know if that's true um but i there, there i can't say that there was like a inflection point for humanity but maybe it's proximity maybe in five years look back and go oh yeah that did change things um but it doesn't seem like it um the other point was oh this was a little woo and um it was phrased in different ways but this idea that people have um Sometimes you hear it like called like somebody called it a third eye, but also like having your antenna up and like being aware of like the energy, the juice, the juice. I like that. Um, that's going on, on around you. And I thought that was really fascinating in like, you know, very normal non woo type context for people to observe that. I like, I like referring to it as an antenna, you know, people's antenna are more in tune more up more I, what do you do with an antenna that make it listen better i don't know when i say up i like dial, like dialed cars in. where it like <laughs> those are so cool but i've definitely i've right? definitely met people who are more in tune with different frequencies than your average person i don't know but i know that makes me sound absolutely out there but <laughs> um, no, i yeah i want to hear more about this no, it's just like I have I have an acquaintance that is so dialed in to like I don't <laughs> even, I'm hesitant to even talk about it because I know how nutty it makes me sound by proxy. <laughs> I'll I'll share one then. I have a person because I maybe you can just like I don't know tap appropriately like once for yes and twice for no whatever it is. <laughs> I have a person that I'm friends with, and there it's like whenever I see them, they go, "How are you?" And, you know, you always give the answer like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. You know, like the, the surface level. And they know, they just know, like, that time when they need to go, yeah, but how are you really? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, damn it. So they like, they know your tells. They know, they know the ins and outs. It doesn't, yeah, but it doesn't even need to be in person. Like, it can be on a phone call. So it's not like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely, um, like, my partner is incredibly intuitive and can re is really good at reading people. And whether there's some sort of like extrasensory thing happening, or she's just really good at reading 
body language and subtext and uh, various cues. I mean, it almost doesn't matter what you call it. It's the same. It's manifesting in the same way. And you yeah. can call it something woo uh, or you can call like it that. like a very good ob uh, observation, uh, observer of people. Like it's, it's a, it's a, you know, just a, a natural knack or, you know, a developed talent or something, you know, she's also observant in, in other ways of like noticing things out in the world that I wouldn't notice, um, you know, without a lot of like, like, wait, what do you, what do you like? It's not just that I'm blind either. Like, <laughs> imagine like riding in a car like that. Stop sign, stop sign, stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that happens too, but that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> really in tune to the stop signs and traffic patterns <laughs> yeah well it's Other like it's like it's like you know us. we'll be we'll be out in the world and there will be you know i don't know an elk like half a mile out in like a middle of a you know grassy plain where they are like you know naturally evolved to blend into their landscape and i'm like what I'm like i don't <laughs> see oh yeah okay i can see it now but like she'll pick it out like you know a mile away. Like she'll be like, oh, it's right there. My and my daughter is a, a, a learned this this talent too. Like they're both really good at at, at that sort of thing. I think I find myself in certain emotional situations where I can't put like my protective barrier up efficiently enough to like mm -hmm. stave off other people's emotional states. So I find that that's something that like I'm extra susceptible to, which I think is mm. partially why I'm, I don't know, chicken or egg, like, am I introverted because of that or mm -hmm. is that part of my introversion? I don't know, but. Yeah, you, ab me. you absorb other people's emotive being and, and it, it, yeah, I, I can. It's just exhausting. Like, yeah. I'm just, I'm like, I can't do it sustainably for a really long period of time without there being like repercussions in the days after. Um, mm -hmm. But my friend is like, I don't know, like she gave me a Reiki treatment and like, I don't really know where I fall on that, but I was like- I don't know where I fall on Reiki either. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what, when, you, when you're like, I don't know, like I was in a really not great place and I was basically just like, you know what? Like you believe in it. So like, let's do this. Yeah. Like if it makes me feel better, I'm game. Yeah. Um, and she and did it? Just, uh, well, it did, and I couldn't explain why. And I was like, "If it's placebo, I'll take it. Like, right. I don't, I don't care." Um, but also, she walked away with knowing things about me that aren't private, but that you would have to like have like an Allison dossier to know about. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, oh, like she knew that I had injured my left knee at some point which happened to me when I was like 14. And it's not something that like comes up very often. Let me tell you the story of my experience with the Zen Osho tarot deck and my marathon tarot reading night at a party at in college. Um, I, I really like the Zen Osho deck was like, I think the first, maybe not the first, but probably the first ish uh, tarot that I got. Um, and I liked it because it's very wibbly wobbly. It's very like jazz. It's very like, you know, you interpret like what you get from, from the images is, is the correct answer. It's less sort of rigid than some of the other, like what I've learned later and what I've experienced with other tarot decks where it's like very much, this means this, and this represents that. And this symbol here is specifically that thing. Like it's very fluid and, and, and Zen. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Um, we won't go into the fact that Osho, Osho Zen is a very weird, like culty kind of little sub genre over there we're just going to go with with the idea anyway so i really like this deck and i i used it a little bit on myself um and then i think i probably said something at some point at this party that like oh yeah i i do tarot and um i ended up doing like a series of tarot readings like one after another after another um and it was it was very much that experience where i was I don't know if it was the cards and they were just on that night. I don't know if it was myself in being able to subconsciously read 
um, uh, the body language and context around the people coming to me and being able and responding to that. Um, or, or if it's something like, you know, the divine channeling itself through me as a, you know, practicer of divination or something, you know, I, I don't know what the, I don't have the words to describe the scientific reason for what happened, but what happened with the, the end result was I was, end up, I was able to extract through the cards things that people hadn't talked about with hardly anyone and uh there was one particular uh, there's one girl who uh had a uh very bad horrible experience that had just recently happened to her uh that she had not told uh anyone uh except for maybe like her best friend at the time and there were very significant like glances between the two of them while i was doing this reading and i was able to through subtext and through like reading the cards like i knew what it was even if i didn't have to say it and she knew that i knew what it was too and was kind of like oh my god like how like how do you even know that wow. yeah. and 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 i did a whole bunch of things like that and it was the same sort of experience where like it was things were coming out that um, I have no, had no right to know, like there, there, nobody said anything, nobody, like, maybe I, maybe I'm really good reading a, a reader of people, I, maybe, but there was something, there was something happening and it was, it was pretty, pretty wild. And like, things like that, like always leave me with a, like, I don't know, magic is real, I guess, uh, mm. <laughs> sort of, uh, like after effect, uh, because like, they're they're just things that that can't be scientifically explained like you know but i feel like that's like i don't know i'm i'm the person that's like i think most of what we think of as magic or like woo is just stuff that we don't haven't yeah. explained yet science wise right yeah. like because i think there was a time when it's just like well we didn't understand like i don't know what's a good example like gravity or like something where we're just like how is everything staying still like <laughs> i just think there's a lot of i don't know yeah the, the giant fire dragon chases the scary <laughs> white dragon across the sky every day it takes about 24 hours uh or, or 12 hours i guess uh and and you know you know the they have a constant battle with the white dragon and the fire dragon are just constantly fighting each other and, and taking control and that's how the sky works yeah and now we're all part of the cult of chris <laughs> <laughs> go for it gary you got do you do you think i guess at least the first question do you think the in these different essays i've read that have this this concept do you think that there is um more awareness of that that well chris i'll use your example and say that like uh, your recognition that there was something. Magic's probably a fine word um, for these purposes, but like, do you think that there there is more recognition of magic at this point as a result what? of the pandemic? I'm not sure how it ties or if it ties to the pandemic. Maybe it ties to the pandemic. Um, I, I could certainly see that as uh, as a trigger point, um, only because the pandemic forced us to you know turn inward and do maybe more reading or maybe expose ourselves to other things because we're bored as shit because we can't do things with people you know well um, i also think there's like, like a, an introspection that a lot of people were forced into. right right my, what i do know and... what i do know is that when i was you know in high school and later and looking for woo related books it was always off in like the personal growth sort of like back mm -hmm. corner of the bookstore, like hidden, like maybe there's like a shelf and a half. Like it's just like this tiny little corner, like hidden away because we we don't want to talk about that. Maybe it's even right next to like the other like religious theology books. And it's like, you know, you know, several stacks of like, you know, Christian theology and then a tiny little personal growth section. And like five of those books are like, you know, from Llewellyn publishing or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Allison knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, yes. I was like, wow, that's like right on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> and what I know, what I know is that we were just at Barnes and Noble, like not 
two or three weeks ago and there is like in full freaking view a an end cap of woo related stuff like books and tarot and just stuff and like there's a whole big section of it and like i was like wow that's 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 a thing you know maybe maybe i don't know if it's because like people don't go to bookstores anymore because they only get books online and so like the target demographic is is narrower and so it's it, the people that would go to a physical bookstore are more likely to be in, into woo stuff than the people that were going to bookstores 20 years ago maybe or maybe it's this thing where like people have, have were forced into this uh period of introspection and through that have come around the other side and and with some sort of understanding of of other stuff i, I don't know but there's definitely a there's definitely a distinction that i noticed i think there's definitely also like tech communities have something to do with it right i mean like you've got your like little niches of communities and tiktok and all the things witch talk as it were witch talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's like i i think the capability of coming together as community online has increased with the pandemic because people were like well i can't meet up in person so I'm delving into all these random interests online and then also some of it overlaps like the Venn diagrams definitely overlapped with like companies discovering that there's money to be made off of people with disposable income of a certain age group that can spend money on tarot cards and crystals and all the things because they're in like and they're in that like really ripe demographic for it and so some of it is just like capitalist but but, but do you think those communities think have do you think those communities have developed more or larger more recently? Because like I remember at the same time, birth of the internet, et cetera, like, you know, I was doing a lot of solo practitioner stuff. And where does solo practitioners go? Where do solo practitioners go when besides the bookstore and, and the library and like check out everything related and, and drawing down the moon and all that stuff? Well, they go online and there were online communities even then in like 1997 and whatever, like um, and and you know, mid nineties, like I, I, there was, there was a lot of stuff, uh, that I was finding and, and communities that were, you know, burgeoning communities at the time. Um, so it's not like it wasn't there and hasn't been there. No, that's true. I guess it's just like the next generation's version yeah. of that, right. Of yeah. Like them stumbling upon something that feels like it's just for their interests. And I feel like while in the beginning, it was like message boards and ICQ and like all the things, I feel like the the algorithm is like dialed into like a crazy extent where it's like if I watch because I'm on TikTok now, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> just as a like passive absorber of content. But it's like if I watch two videos of a certain subject, it feeds it's like crazy to watch how it feeds me more of that content and gets rid of other content that I might have wanted to see. Yeah. Like it's really interesting to watch where it's like I'll watch videos that I'm not interested in at all just to see my algorithm like shift radically. How how lasting are those shifts? Like if you if you watch some random thing um if you watch some random thing that you wouldn't have otherwise watched for how long are you getting fed related things to that? Um, if I keep watching them, it'll keep feeding me that. But if I then switch back to a different, like if I'm like, I want to go back to like macrame TikTok, <laughs> <laughs> then it'll, then it'll after, I would say like five to 10 videos will feed me other videos. Are we talking like, so it's okay. So it's like a number of, it's not like, like you're watching like weird alt-right stuff for like three days after you happen to like morbidly curious uh... no it's pretty it's pretty fast and if you and it really registers at least for me it seems to really register like if i swipe off something right away it won't even bother yeah I'm like i don't want to watch people like take out their earwax that's not my thing <laughs> like <laughs> i'm just like what if, like this is not hmm. why i'm on tiktok <laughs> sorry gary we've, go... we've totally <laughs> diverted from here no uh, this is good i want to go back to the um barnes and noble thing though and say like I, capitalism in this case has to be used as a measuring stick like yeah maybe demographics have changed but capitalism like sell filters like if it wasn't making money it wouldn't be on an end game. right so yeah whatever the percentage is there like 
it's not insignificant. The the cost to rent that store location hasn't changed that much that, you know, in 20 years, at least as a percentage of top line sales, that it would be that they would say, oh, we could just eat it at the on this end cap. You know, the capitalist imperative is to make as much as possible as fast as possible. So that that is a that is a data point that's not invaluable, regardless of the changing demographics that visit the store. Um, I want to go back to something he said, Allison. I'm curious about the concept that it's there's a scientific explanation that we just haven't been able to uncover yet. Oh, for and, like for magic or whatever. That you yeah, mean. yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Well, yeah, because and that's that's broad. I mean, obviously it's broad. And I'll use the example of um, uh, there's like this quasi useful example when back when the, we had Jude, he was alive. It was a dog. I feel like I should throw that in really quickly. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was, did, you, did you see the like mask of confusion on my face? <laughs> of course, everyone knows my dog, Jude. Um, Jude was our dog for many years. Um, and uh, we moved up here to North Carolina. He's still alive and he 16 or something. Like he was old. He, so good run. Um, near the end of his days, I would take him out before bed. And um, uh, there was one night I went outside and something just fell off. And he could feel it too in the air. I think I've probably shared this, but it's worth rehashing. So we went to the tree that he likes to pee on before calling it a night. And like we're, we're both of us, like, we, you know, it was like the tension was there. Like I could feel it in the leash. He was looking around, like, usually he's just, you know, listless, but he was on alert. And I'm like, man, this is weird. Um, and so we go in and I'm like, I wonder what the hell that was. Like, there was no reason for me to be scared or anything. Like, there's a huge street light here, there's nothing around. It's a quiet street. As I was closing the door, I realized, like, right as I the door almost closed, like, I'm like, oh, it's death. It's death. And I didn't know why, but I'm like, what, else, what, what was I, what was, what was so scary about to, that to me? And then it was two days later that Ty found a dead deer down the hill. So my theory is this, this deer was down the hill dying at that point. It had been hit by a car and was down there suffering. And, um, but there's no logic. I mean, there's not like a, there wasn't a sound. There wasn't like a, a movement and it was far enough from the porch. You couldn't see it from the porch, you know? But, but there was a part of me that was aware and a part of the dog that was aware. And I don't know if it was that, I don't know if I keyed off of the dog being aware, you know, I'm not like, it, like maybe there's a simple explanation. Maybe there's I've a, always, maybe. I've, I've always gone back and I don't know if this is still true. Um, but I think it's still probably mostly true. Um, gone back to the idea. There's some, something I read a very long time ago that was basically to the extent of like, we only know, like a small fraction of we only understand a small fraction of how the brain works um and i've always thought that the part the unknown part that's where magic lives it's it's mm. the 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 areas that we haven't explored that's that's where like magic lives that's maybe where god lives that's where or gods um that's where like all the stuff that we don't have a framework to explain uh is explained and we just don't have the means to like put metrics on it you know to, to analyze yeah. it uh objectively i'll i'll the the metaphor i've been using lately to describe that under like understanding that part of the brain is like um it's so simple and so dumb but it works for me um so like i had a crack in my phone screen um years ago and I called a place and I was like, hey, can you replace my screen? And they're like, well, how bad is the crack? And I'm like, let me take a picture and send it to you. And I'm holding my phone and I'm like, am I going to take a picture? Like, I, I can't. <laughs> it's the thing. Like, I can't, the thing can't see the thing to take a photo of the thing. And I feel like that's the, the Sh problem. I'm Schrodinger's, uh, Schrodinger's uh, cracked iPhone. <laughs> but, but I mean, it, but it, I mean, but it's, you know, like it's there, like the brain's there and the brain can be like, I can't. I can't actually introspect this part because I, I need that part to do that thing. Like it's physically mm -hmm. not there. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. It's, it feels like a good analogy and it, for me. It works for now. Well, there's also like this idea, uh, like, you know, we culture, culturally, we are attracted to, to like superhero stories, um, in varying degrees. Um, yeah. uh, but like a lot of those stories are not like they don't they don't exist in a vacuum and many of those things that are described in superhero fiction and comic books and whatever mm. is based vaguely on things that 
occasionally do happen in real life. Occasionally there is somebody who is randomly super humanly strong or randomly like, or like was, I, I read a thing about like somebody was in an accident and then immediately like after the accident learned like, you know, I don't know, astrophysics or something like some really complex thing they had no knowledge of before. And then suddenly like something just triggered in their brain as a result of the accident and now they have the capability of, of knowing stuff that they didn't know before um and again like there's so much unexplained stuff about the brain and like you know there maybe we are harboring superhero genes somewhere in there if, if we could unbury the the buried parts and like stuff that doesn't get used or the way that 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 neural connections are made like if those pathways are just like tweaked a little bit maybe they they do other things or maybe they're already doing them like i kind of think yeah. that that like like our per, our perception and what we describe as magic is like our brains already making connections and but we aren't aware of of how those connections are working and uh so like we don't see how our brain is like processing this information but it is processing the information such that gary you're able to know when something died even if you didn't know if you didn't see it, didn't hear it, there's no, like, your senses aren't giving you that information, but there's some other thing that's happening, some something that is, like, tr like making those connections in your brain that's allowing you to come to that conclusion um, with, you know, uh, in this case, like, presumably accurate, you know, accurate assumption. Yeah, I, I think, t yeah, that's the other part is, is maybe not, like, maybe it was absolutely unrelated and the zero isn't there for 24 hours later. Like, I don't know. But then it was a premonition, and it was like you sensing that it would. Be, yeah. I mean, you know, like you could call it a, a million things. Um, I, I feel like one of the popular areas that this is being explored in right now is people, um, uh, really wanting to like apply quantum physics on this, right? And yeah, I can jam with that. That's cool. Um, I think the other part that's that's easy to forget is when we look at like animals, right? Like they don't second guess that kind of stuff. Like the dog knew. Yep. And two days later, did it matter to him at all? No. Nope. This, this self awareness is <laughs> is is finite. Whereas we have this problem where we we need to we need to take it apart and unpack and understand it and like get how it works. Like the the dog didn't care. Like went out, freaked out. Yeah, and and and, and the word fine. that we use the word that we use to describe that is instinct. But like a dog's instinct. Yeah. Like I I. I yeah. I believe that we have just trained our instinct out of ourselves. Like we don't, we don't trust that, that part of ourselves. There's a book I've probably mentioned on the show before. Um, there's a book called the gift of fear um, that mm -hmm. I read in college. And um, basically the idea is that your brain is right. And like, if your brain is telling you you're in danger, then whether you can quantify it or not, you are just, and, and the idea is that if you're feeling that fear, if you're feeling that like, something's something's not right that you need to trust that rather than pushing that down because it is your brain responding to stimuli whether you are aware of of the stimuli and conscious of those stimuli or not um and and yeah like it talks about like how people didn't do that and and this is what happened and like you know self-defense training and all sorts of stuff i mean it's used for a lot of things but like the the core on the core concept of 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 the gift of fear is that um you know we are we are processing information all the time whether we know it or not so if if we get a bad vibe then then we need to do a better job of trusting that and we've trained ourselves to not because because there's this fallacy that humans don't have instinct um and and instinct is just an, a word to describe a thing that we don't understand which is dumb um i have to share we were playing the game parks last night Mm -hmm. Katie was playing, and it came to be her turn. And it's your turn. And she was very focused, and I wasn't sure if she heard. I said, "You know, it's your turn, right?" She said, "I'm processing." I'm like, okay, <laughs> I will give you your space, but it cracked me up. Like, like a, like a, she saw it as like she was doing like a writing formulas, computing, considering possibilities. Which, by the way, she's gotten really good at that game. It used to be like. You know, we'd play and she'd get distracted chasing things that didn't matter. But <laughs> now she's like, she's a powerhouse. Like, I'm kind of afraid of her. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good game. Oh, it's so beautiful. Do you have the expansions? 
I don't have the expansions, although I saw them at Barnes and Noble when we were at Barnes and Noble looking at the Woo things. Um, yeah. And uh, and I was like, we should we should get those. Um, we also need to get expand the expansions for Wingspan. That's another one. We have um, we have one expansion one. for Wingspan. Which which one do you have? The Europe one. Okay, I think we have Oceania. I don't remember. Wingspan is a game, a board game uh, about mm, birds. Should... Beautiful game, another beautiful game. Yeah. Uh, Parks is beautiful. If you're not a board gamer and you're like, oh, I don't like like weird blah blah blah, like check these games out. No, you definitely should. Yeah. Wingspan is beautiful, and whether you win or lose, you still have just a, a wonderful journey playing it. It's good for like. A yeah, because if nothing else, you learn about birds. I mean, how how is that bad? Does this include <laughs> yeah. flightless birds? Uh, yes, I believe so. <laughs> Some are, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would love to see um, a wingspan penguins edition. But... <laughs> um, and the same thing with parks. Like parks is um, maybe not as educational, but it's still beautiful, and it, it still gets you thinking about, uh, well, Mother Earth. Yeah, I mean the point the of parks. It, yeah. The the we we kickstarted parks uh when it was on kickstarter and and the thing that attracted me about parks uh, as a concept was that um it was about making the journey last and making memories along the way rather than immediately getting to mm -hmm. the destination um and that is a value that I that I think we are my this family uh, applies to traveling to national parks. Like we're not about like going to the thing, taking the picture in front of the sign, and like hitting all of the 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 stops that you that are like the expected stops. We're all about like going deep and like finding all the hidden places and making sure that like we. We, you know, like we want to find all the cool slot canyons. We want to find all the places where the people aren't and, um, you know, make make our memories there. And I, I, I appreciate the, the philosophy behind parks. Uh, and that was that's the, that's my like my favorite part about it. Also, the art is amazing. Um, I don't remember what the second expansion is. There's Nightfall and then the other one is called. Like, it's something about wildlife. Maybe it's just called mm. wildlife. Um, but the the parks cards in wildlife are a decidedly different design, um, but still somehow fit in, um, and it's it's just another beautiful experience. I didn't win last night. I came in. <laughs> so we're not well, hearing from a winner right now. <laughs> 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 I have a friend who they she's one of like six or seven siblings, and um, in their house, whoever won the board game had to clean up the board game. Keep you humble. Oh, that that's a good rule. Um, I don't. It would drive me nuts. I always yeah. want I want things to go back where they belong. I want it to be put away right. I, yeah. I played Settlers of Catan the other day for the first time, and I was really bad at it. <laughs> that's a really. There, not, there's a there's I'm a learning sure. curve. I think it's over. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.